Hi, today I'm going to try and make sort of like a toile, a mock-up of this beautiful Ellison Hattie by Merchant Mills pattern that I've been wanting for a while. And before I invest in some great quality fabric, which obviously will cost me a lot of money, I'm going to use an old sheet, of course, <laughs> um, and I'm going to cut to a, a very, very thin, another thin duvet cover up. And I'll make that um, probably the top half. Let me show you. So there's, you know, there's two parts. It's a dress. So if I, I hopefully I've got enough to use um, this duvet cover on the top half, and then I've got some leftover gingham blue check fabric. And you may remember the other um, apron dress I made. So that was a dotty angel pattern I made some time ago, and I've got quite a lot left over because it was a king size duvet or a, or a king size fitted sheet, I'm not quite sure. So yeah, so I'm going to be making this today, so come along with me and let's see how it turns out and I'll let you know what I think about the pattern. I'm not a very um, professional uh, dressmaker, I have I do it for fun, I'm in, I you know, make lots of soft furnishing things for the home and clothes, but obviously I only do it for myself, but I love the process of it as well, so hopefully we can do it together and hopefully it will inspire you to do something with your fabrics that you can pick up cheap. And I think it's really worth just making what they call a twirl and uh, seeing how that pattern fits on you, because every pattern is different, isn't it? And we've all got different body shapes and we all want things a little bit longer or shorter, wider or slimmer, etc, etc. So, yeah, let's see um, what this is all about. So the Ellis and Hattie, I'm going to make the Ellis, the, the, that is the one with sleeves on. And the great thing about this pattern also is that the Hattie is a sleeveless one. So you've got two options there. So I'm going to go for the Ellis and it's one with sleeves, short sleeves. A nice sort of bodice, it's got a facing as well around the, the front and the back and a gathered skirt and inserted pockets. So it's a nice comfy cozy sort of style and they suggest the fabrics are linen, four to eight ounces, denims, hemp, hemp slash cotton, cotton chambray, lightweight wools or lightweight corduroys or linens. So this is like a poly cotton, so it's very, very thin. So it's not something that they probably would suggest on there. This is something called Tencel, T-E-N-C-E-L. Not sure what that fabric is, never come across that actually. And um, so if you know what that is, please leave a comment in the uh, comments box below. And I'd, I'd appreciate that, I've not come across that. So for a size 12 to 14, at 120 centimetres, you need 2.9 metres. So I do know that on this blue and white check one, there was two metres, hence why I thought, right, I'll have to make it out of the, you know, the top half out of this. So I'm going to pan it all out and then hopefully we've got enough. So come along with me while I make it. been really wanting to uh, do one of these patterns for some time. So I thought actually what I want to do is just trial it out first, make sure that it's going to be okay. Because good quality fabric, you know, often is quite expensive, isn't it? And what I'm going to do, because I'm tall, I'm going to make it a bit longer. So I'm putting this on here for guide, so I can use, when it is gingham check, of course, you can just use the gingham and the checks as a template, so you can just cut straight, which is fantastic, uh, straight across. Not quite sure how the sizing is on on the Merchant Mills, but it's a very good brand. So I've got every faith in them that it will be good. But like I say, always try, if you can, and get a bit of cheap fabric and try it out first. Hope you all do well today. Everybody's keeping well. What are you all up to? Are you all making anything? Are you watching the sewing bee? Being inspired? I've noticed they've started doing things like this, making things out of duvet covers this time. <laughs> it's a really good idea to get that fabric cheaply, you know, especially when you want to make something very special for a special occasion and then try it out first and then you know for sure that it fits right and it's worth that investment really. You certainly learn as you go along as well with dressmaking. So, 
that's a good thing about trying it out first because then if you do make a mistake in the first time then you tend to be hopeful and get it right the next time okay. instead of using very expensive material and having an expensive mistake so the trouble with these like poly cottons are they haven't got the weight and I do know that obviously with this pattern it says a linen so it obviously wants a good heavy weight so it drapes well I would think so with that in mind the end result may not necessarily be the same as when it will be a linen of course but what I'm trying to do is see if this style actually fits me because when you watch the programs and they're making all these things you don't know if that style will suit you do you? Right then, so we've put the pattern on the second bit of fabric, so I'm going to put it all out. So I'm a bit excited about this one. I've been wanting to do this type of style of the pattern for a long time and then when I saw this Merchant and Mills pattern in Dorset Fabric Shop, I thought I must buy it, have a go at it. Right, so that's going to be Number seven for the skirt. Pull that up and put that to one side. Then we've got to work out now how to do this top half using the other fabric because we haven't got enough of that fabric. Now the problem with this is there's pattern on it um, and there's a pattern, it's a regu an, irre an irregular pattern. We've got lots of this at the top which is lovely, like little flowers. Then at the bottom, it kind of sweeps into a silk scalloped edge, which is lovely. And if you look at my last video, I incorporated that at the bottom of the um, apron dress. It looks really nice, but I don't want to do that now. I might use that part for the sleeves because that would look lovely in the sleeves, wouldn't it? So we'll try and keep that for the sleeves. Let's have a little look now. On the pattern piece, the numbers that we need for the Ellis dress. So, we now need number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and three is the sleeve. So, and we need to look what you do with it. That's all still on the fold. I need to fold this up. I think what I might do with the sleeves is put those out first so I know I've got them in the right position because that's going to have to be exact right position for the sleeve so we need pattern number three first cut to two so that would be like so and that's the grain line so it's going upwards so that's nice Make sure that's right. I must admit, I do prefer those notches. We've now got the sleeve, so we've got to work on the bodice now, haven't we? On the pattern. So the bodice now is one, two. And then we've got a four, five, and six, and that's all done on the fold. So what we need to do now is also be aware of what's top and what's bottom. So this is the top, and we need to put that on the fold. Let's try and fold it neatly. So get these on. So at number one, and that says front bodice body is cut on the fold. It's exciting doing a new pattern, isn't it? You know. Following the instructions, so satisfying when it comes out as well. Really nice. So we put this on the fold. It says put one on the fold, and normally I've measured that to my body because I'm tall. So this one front. So what you've got to do is put that on yourself and think where's your waist. And my waist is just about here, so I might lengthen that just a slight bit. Put all the other pieces on first, but I think we've got enough. So that's the first. The other long one is 
and number two Ooh. and you cut two of these because it's not on the fold it's not on the fold it's just two pieces right then so i've pinned it all out i'm going to cut it all out now of this and when i finish i'll show you okay so now i have cut everything out what i've done with this skirt i've got two pieces on the fold i've made it a little bit longer for myself because i'm tall so I extend it on this line but obviously because it's um gingham check i've been able to just cut it correctly and extend them um how, however long i want this is the sleeves and i've put that on the pattern bit so i'm hoping we can have a really pretty design on the on the sleeves and that'll come through that'd be very attractive put a little inch longer on there for myself pocket back bag cut four two pairs of those i mean you don't see them do you but you know that's in the florals and then the top front bodice cut one on the fold again i've lengthened this by one and a half inches and i've also just put a slight bit more on the top you know around the neckline for the shoulder and i have on this back bodice as well done it so it matches and then we've got the front facing of course and so i've allowed for that extra bit at the neckline on the back neck facing and the front neck facing as well so then when you actually put those pieces around the neckline front and back you'll have a bit longer so it'll all match in the seams etc so we're ready now to start sewing but that's how the pattern is um, working and obviously with the design we should have on the top there we should have it all floral and then your, your sleeves will be floral as well with a little bit on the bottom and then the skirt will be gingham check so It'll be very nice hopefully it'll come out lovely but it, it's a very lightweight poly cotton so it's not uh, ideal really you want a nice weight but as i say i'm trialing this out you can get better and then invest in more expensive fabric and make it again so it's all about just testing your pattern really so everything's there it's nice and easy clear instructions i like the instructions the thing i didn't like is these little lines you don't get a, a triangle i like that it's easy to cut so you know i've made quite a bit of a mess on on these bits trying to cut these bits out you know so i'm not happy with that really i'm not very good at that so we'll go on to the instructions now so let's go on to page one interfacing i haven't got anything interfacing at the moment which is a bit of pain um so i might just proceed without the interfacing and obviously when I make the dress up in a better fabric, I will have got interfacing by then. But generally speaking, you cut your interfacing on number fours and fives for back and front neckline facing. Number two, rulu. So cut a square piece of fabric, fold diagonally, stitch half a centimetre away from the fold, trim away from the stitch line, attach a threaded bodkin needle to one end of the ruler and thread it through the tube, turning tube to the right hand side. Oh, I don't know what a ruler is. Place a ruler on the left back neck facing, one centimetre down. Oh, right, that's at the back, isn't it? That must be, because your back has got an opening. That must be this bit here, which uh, holds a toggle or something on one side. I see. Ah, so we've got a bit of extra to do then for that. So we'll get on with that. And then your neck facing right sides together, match seam lines. Attach back neck facing to front neck facing. So that we can then add that and do your darts on your neck and then we're going to do the Ellis only bus darts and press the centre front right centre together pin the and stitch the bus darts on the front bodice press them down and then we'll get onto the shoulder seam and then start attaching back bodice to the front bodice lining so that's the first stage so i'll come back and show you that when that's done right so the ruler is just like a loop that you make 
and that will fasten over the back and put a little button in it so that actually you can tie it loop it over a button at the back so I just cut it at a five centimeter square folded it in diagonally so there's a square fabric folded it in diagonally did a, a running stitch cut the trimmed off the excess and with a big darning needle stuffed it inside each other so it's made a tube basically and that is it and next one is to place it on the back neck facing one centimeter down from the top edge on the center of the back line making sure the loop is adequate for your button size and adjust accordingly stitch inside the center back seam allowance and it says one and a half centimeters in from the edge so that's what i've done so I've made that little rule or something. It's made a little loop and you sew it down there and then obviously it will get turned and it'll be like that over your back. Right, so with the right sides together I've pinned all the back and the neck face, eh? And I'm going to sew that just together now. I'm hoping I've got it right. That's why it's ideal to make a 12 you know, so you, you get your feel for the pattern and if you're making any mistakes then it doesn't matter because it's not expensive fabric, you know. If you're not 100% experienced then it's ideal, I think, to, to do it this way. But I'm loving it and I'm quite excited how it's coming out. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's sort this bit out now. Next bit are the neck darts. So with right sides together and matching notches, pin stitch neck darts on the front bodice and front bodice lining if you're doing the hattie, but I'm doing the Alex. Okay. So we've done the front of the neck darts and we've done the bust darts now on both sides of the front facing and now for the back and it says you must work a machine line just inside the seam line on the back shoulder on the back bodice pull the thread until the back shoulder matches the front shoulder pattern so there probably needs a little bit of gathering in there so we'll do two lines of stitching I'll just work a machine line just inside the seam so I've just undone all this because I made a mistake on the facing so I've laid it all out now so I've put the right sides together, so that would be the back seam, the back, and this will be the front facing. So they will have to go like that, and that will have to go like that. Well, I need a bit of a break, <laughs> so I've been to a cup of coffee and a chocolate. Oh, I'm supposed to be on a diet, but you know, it's stress. But, like I said before, this is why you must always make a dummy. Always make that dummy one. Otherwise you'll be a dummy like me and make a few mistakes and then have to kind of unpick them. But you know, it's better this way on a cheap fabric. And um, basically the facing, I just got the back and the front facing the wrong way. Um, and then just take a break, you know, have a little bit of a drink or something that, you know, you want and uh, have that to rest and then carry on and all will be well <laughs> but uh, I hope you're enjoying it so far please leave some comments about what you're making as well and um, you know hopefully I know these videos go on quite a long time because it does take a long time to make a dress you know I know the Great British um, sewing bee that's an hour long and you know you don't see hardly anything on there either do you you know so I'm hoping that if I make a lot of mistakes and show you what I've done wrong that it will help you as well and we'll be learning together uh, on this pattern and it looks a really good pattern so I'm hoping we'll be all right and it's also helping me get rid of that fabric stash and as I was telling you you know some time ago in some of the other videos about trying to declutter I've been really good lately and not bought any more material I've got quite a lot of material that I've amassed over the past couple of years and a lot of it has been fabric from 
like curtains and duvets that have been bought really reasonable in sales. Some of them, some of the curtain fabric, I've managed to thrift because it's been like vintage and I'm really into roses and florals. So I've got a lot over the years from charity shops and the odd flea markets and antique fairs. And then I also buy, as I said before, from supermarkets, all the reduced duvet covers and sheets, if I like the style and the pattern of that, when they're reduced in them. Unfortunately, because now the sewing bee on television are doing what I've been doing for several years and other people have as well, um, that'll highlight that you can go and do, you know, make fashion out of duvet covers and sheets and not the whole country would have realised that. So I reckon stocks will be quite um, low soon. And also I went into Sainsbury's and I was looking at their duvet covers only two days ago. There were some nice ones in there, but they weren't reduced as much. So I reckon everyone's unfortunately being aware now. So we'll have to look elsewhere and try other things. But in the meantime, I shall start using up the fabric that I've got. So I hope you're enjoying the video. Please give me a like and please subscribe. I don't just do do sewing. I do cooking and making all sorts of things as well, but it just so happens that I've just been on a, a sewing journey at the moment recently and just thinking, oh, I better film that. But what I ought to be doing is also trying to film all the things I'm doing as well on the side, like I've just made some elderflower flower cordial and you know various things that when I've been out and I buy and I make my chutneys and various things, I must get in the habit of just putting the camera on more. <laughs> what we're liking. <laughs> So, all right, back to this sewing anyway. I'm gonna finish my coffee and then we'll, we'll get back to it. <laughs> It'll be all worth it in the end. Right, so with right sides together, we're going to pin the front bodice to the back bodice at the shoulder seams, sew them together and zigzag both shoulder seams together. Okay, attaching neck facing to the bodice. With the right sides together and matching shoulder seams, stitch the facing to bodice at the neck. Note, the seam allowance around the neck is one centimetre only. Layer the seam allowance and clip into the curves. Press the seam allowance towards the facing. Okay guys, so what I've done is I've put the right sides together. There's your facing, one centimetre all the way around. Okay, and then you can zigzag it and press it back with an iron. I have sewn, so I ironed all this inside and out now. All right, so, and then it says to go over the edge and then it'll keep it down but it's looking quite nice now coming together right we're on number 26 and it says body side seams and cross stitch what that is so with the right sides together stitch the front and back at the side seams neaten the edge of the seams with an overlocker or zigzag and press open work a cross stitch to secure the facing to the shoulder seam of the bodice Okay, so we can do that in a bit. Let's get these side seams done now. Pin and sew them and then press them. Right, so now we're on the pattern for the sleeve. So double stitch from each little point on the, the pattern. So double stitch it from there to there twice. That'll gather it in and then that'll become able to sort of manipulate it into the shoulder seam on the actual body shortly so I'm going to two, two stitches from here to here on both of them. Right sides together matching the, the nodules as per the pattern piece and sew up. Leave the long end threads because obviously you're going to uh, gather those in. Okay and then with right sides together stitch the sleeve seam, neaten the edge of the seam with an overlocker or zigzag and press them open. Now to put the sleeves into the bodice top with right sides together and matching notches, pin the sleeve into the armhole, drawing up e the E stitch on both sides to pull it in. Okay. 
So you want that the right side up and put it inside it. So it's both the inside or well, right sides together inside the sleeve itself. And just pin it as I say and then turn the whole thing in and just see if it's right. Make the right sleeve, etc. Will it be going the right way, <laughs> etc. There's nothing in there. Uh, so bottom seam is with the bottom seam there. So that's right. That, that'd be lovely. Okay. Ah, so we're all right with that one. I just tend to just check everything over and over again because it is so easy to make mistakes. I often think it might be just me. I'm at that age where uh, I've had the brain fog, but it's not gone. It's still here. So I'm thinking, will it ever go? I try and not worry about things like that. You know, just keep enjoy myself, laugh about things. It's not worth it, is it? End of the day, you can't do anything about anything. As you get a bit older, you do get a bit more dual I suppose. Right, so, again, we've got that double thread, so we're going to be using that to pull it in. So just put your notches together first, pin it in. And then what we'll do with the gathering, we'll start gathering the seam and then pinning it and sewing it. And it just makes for a very nice, well-fitted sleeve then. The main thing I would say is just make sure that the gathers are even. And if so if it looks even, that's the main thing. Hopefully we're all right. Right then, so we've done the bodice top now. Pop the sleeves in, okay, and then it's going to be fitted onto the gathered skirt next. Hi, so it's D2 and I've had a nice break and I thought I'd leave the skirt section till today. So let's get on with the skirt. Right, so you'll remember that's the pattern we're doing. And I've cut out two number sevens front and back on the folds on the pattern. So we'll take this off and I will presume it's a case of doing a running stitch across the waistline. But let's have a little look at these instructions. So where are we? Number 30. So we're doing the Ellis, attaching the pocket bags first. With the right size together, and matching the notches, stitch the pocket bag, pocket bags to each side of front and backs. Neaten the seam allowance together with a zigzag or overlock and then press the seams towards the bags. So the easiest way of doing this is to get you know, obviously a skirt and this is where your notches are for your pocket bags. And then make sure you've got right size together. So if you if you think your hand will be going in there on each side so you need to make sure that those are right sides they will match both sides and your hand will go in and you'll see the piece if you pull it out you see the correct side of the fabrics together if that makes sense hopefully so the inside of your pocket needs the right side of the material showing pin them on and then sew them on each one and then sew them together when we do the seams Right, the next one is skirt side seams and with the Ellis only, with the right sides together, stitch the front to the back, stitching around the pocket bags. Neaten seam allowance together with a zigzag or overlock and then press the pockets and seam towards the front. So straight down the side seam, around the pockets to join together and right down to the very hem edge. Right, so on to number 35. So this is gather the skirt and make sure the notches are visible, including the centre front and the centre back. Working with the largest stitch on your machine, work two parallel lines of stitching on the right side of the fabric, 
one slightly higher than the other, um, one slightly higher than the seam line, a thread's width, and another half a centimetre above the first, starting and stopping at the side seams. Leave the long threads. Right, so we've got our double gather stitch on number four, the longest. And then what we're going to do then is attach the skirt and we'll gather it all up and attach it using the notches and the side seams. So the instructions say, number 36, attach skirt. Attaching the skirt with the right side of the skirt facing the right side of the bodice and matching notches Pin at intervals to distribute the fullness. Pull your bobbin threads on one side to gather the fullness and tie off. Add more pins to secure. Repeat for the back, the other side and pin and then we can attach by sewing them. So this is the fun part because we're getting nearer now aren't we? So we're going to put the right side of the top, the bodice, inside the skirt and we're going to match the sides and the back seam. Okay, so we know where we are. So your pockets are your side seams. So you want to get your notches from the pocket to the notch. Side seam there. I'm not sure that's the bang on. Pin it on and your notch. Make sure your seam is bang on. Matching together there. On the other side now, just check it all fits. I'll just tweak it a little bit around the gathering to make sure that it's all even as well while you're doing that. You don't want to pull it out and then have a, a flat bit that you'll notice later on, so just tweak it as you're pinning it in. Right, there's a bit of gather here and a bit of a flat bit, so we'll just even it out like that. Spread the gathering out equally all around. And you'll have a very nice gathering all around the waistband when you've sewn it together on the finished dress. It'll all look nice and even. Just this little bit of time spent on that now will help it in the long run. Just thought I'd share this again with you. This scissors great. So I've zigzagged the hem and I'm just using this bondo hem to fold it over once more. Really quick and a lovely neat finish. I'd recommend that. Especially with light fabrics that might actually pucker. You know, sometimes or hang incorrectly. So yeah. Just hemming tape, hemming web. So this is the reveal. Really pleased with it. Very, very baggy. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of cabbages and roses. 
looks like a cabbage and rose uh, style. I've got the nice pockets which obviously coordinate inside. I've got those on both side seams. Really, really comfy. Obviously, it doesn't show your figure off, so you know it's a big, sort of big, baggy kind of skirt. But that's the fashion, that's the style of it. I'll show you. And as you, as you know, I used blue gingham for the skirt, and then a different duvet cover I used for the top. It's got all the darts in. And then at the bottom of the duvet cover was this sort of border. So I cut that out and made the sleeve. So, you know, it all kind of coordinates really well. Quite, quite pleased with it. I'm used to use, uh, wearing styles that are more fitted, you know, and slimming. But I wanted to, I really want one of these dresses. So I hope you like it. Oh yeah, I should show you the little button I put on the back. So that was the Ellis dress. The Hattie is the one without sleeves. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye now.